So lead genning with social media strategies that get you business. Um, I have a lot of opinions on this because, you know, when I started real estate six years ago, I was not on social media. I did not want to do social media. I did not like social media. I did not like showing my face. I did not like any of the things, but I learned to like it because literally it changed my whole world. Um, and it's a free medium. So I'm very passionate about it. And I think there's certain ways, um, that work better than others. And this is just my opinion. These are just things that worked for me that maybe you can get tidbits of and obviously do it your way, figure out your way. But one of our expansion partners recently, she's newer in the business and was a little frustrated about, all right, I don't know if this is totally correct, but some of you guys, you're, you're newer and you're frustrated because you're maybe not getting leads yet or getting business from social media. So you're wondering why, why are you, why are you even doing it? And here is my biggest thing I'm going to tell you, social media can be a long-term strategy that takes time to build up. Absolutely, it takes time to build up. People think I did this overnight. It took me two years to build up. I think if you do it correctly, I think on my team, you guys have different resources because you're on the team and you can use different things, but you can be more effective and you can get there quicker than I did. But the biggest thing I want you to know is it takes time. People are watching you. Who are you trying to attract? A lot of these people are people that you know. You want someone that you know either to maybe use you or if they're not in business with you, these conversations are happening all the time. Oh, I see Kelly. They're talking to someone else that's maybe selling. Oh my gosh, I see Kelly on social media. Her signs are everywhere. She's selling this. You got to call Kelly Brown. You want them to say your name, but over time, you have to prove that you are, you know, that you are doing business, that you are a credible agent, that you know what you're talking about, that you're adding value. So I think there's some strategic ways to do this, but my biggest thing and takeaway for you guys is it takes time. You have to be consistent. You have to show up. I have an agent that I'm looking at right now on our team that was on another team that's been in the business for 10 years. Um, on that team, they weren't really rewarded for bringing in their own business. She did not do any social media since she's been on my team for, I don't know, let's call it four or five months. I don't even know how long it's been. Um, but she stepped up her social media game and already has, has leads and has gotten buyers maybe not sellers yet, I can't remember, from, from, from Instagram. So it absolutely can work and it can work quicker um, for you. Okay, so I will say that it can be a little bit of a passive approach. If you are somebody right now in this business and you need to make money right now, you can do other things to supplement. A lot of us in the beginning don't have money to do that. But if you are, you know, if you are someone and you need leads right now, pay for them. Zillow, you can run Facebook ads. There's other things that you can do to do paid ads, right? On eXp, we have make it rain. It's like 500 bucks a month. You can enroll in that. There's different things, but in the beginning, it is hard because you don't have a lot of money. So I didn't have a lot of money. And so that's why I did Facebook or that's why I did social media. Um, and I absolutely believe in that. But if you need stuff right now, there's ways that you can do paid stuff. Okay. That's a whole nother topic on, a, on another training. Okay. Set your expectations correctly. Don't think that it's overnight that all of a sudden you're going to be getting business from social media. Your friends and family who's ever watching you, if you are a new agent, they're like, huh, there's a million agents. There's a million of us and not all of us last, right? So they're wondering, huh, does she know what she's talking about? Is she really going to be sticking around? So this is an opportunity for you to be relevant and show that you are a credible expert in the industry. You have to get there. In the beginning, you might not know, you know, you might not be an expert. So, you know, there's things that you can do. I'll talk about that in a sec to show that you are, um, but set your expectations. Um, correctly. It can take, it can take time to build it up. All right. So I'm all about adding value. I've always been like this. This is, this is how I am. And I'll talk about some of these strategies, but I, I think it's so cute. Some of you are doing your TikToks and I've seen some of you use it effectively where you're doing TikToks and reels and you're getting you, some of people are getting business from it, but I will say for me personally, I'm an adding value person. I want to see that somebody is good at what they do. Um, that's just me. And I think some of these 
I don't want to offend anyone, but I think some of these TikToks and people are, what people are doing is they're really cute. Um, you know, you're mimicking, they're, they're super cute. If I was somebody, I might like you. I might think you're really cute and darling, but are you, do I think you're an expert? Do I think that you know what you're talking about for real estate? I like you. Maybe I trust you. I think you're darling, but are you adding value and showing me that you are an expert in the industry? So I would really encourage some of you who are not doing that to add that in, add that in. So you're not just, you know, I don't know. Okay. And keep it simple. It does not need to be complicated. So I'm going to talk to you. I have nine different ideas here that I'm going to talk to you about, but you could take one away. Sometimes these trainings, when I go to trainings, sometimes it can be like, oh my gosh, there was so much info and I don't take anything away and apply it. Take one or two things away. If you, you, if you grab something, if it resonates with you. Okay. So let's talk about these social strategies. First one is it is more of a passive medium, right? So you're, you're putting stuff out there, but make it active, connect with people, comment on their stuff. Um, you know, you can go on you, wh whatever platform you're using, Facebook, Instagram, you can not only just like their stuff, but you can comment it on it too. A authentically be authentic, but engage with people. Don't just put stuff out there and not give back. So start giving back more. People ask me all the time, how much time I spend on social media a day, hours. It's my lead gen. It's a, it's my one thing, Gary Keller's book, one thing, take one thing and do it really well. It's my lead. I spend hours a day. So either I'm going to pick up the phone and say, do you want to buy a seller or invest in real estate all day long, which I do not want to do. And I do not want to door knock. And I do not want to do some of those things. Right. But I do show up on social media and I try to be authentic and add value. So make it my first point, make it active. Content. If you're a newer agent you're, and you are not on a team and you don't have listings, it can be really hard to be like, what am I going to talk about? Okay. But I did not use that as an excuse in the beginning. I was not on a team while I was on a team. And then I got the heck out of there really quick because there wasn't value. So, but I figured it out. I had to figure out ways. And literally my goal, you guys, is I got, I figured out every day. I was involved in real estate some way, somehow here are some ideas. We have gorgeous model homes available. I say this all the time. Um, and there's one person new on my Kelly Brown homes team right now that has said like every week you should be showing up at one or two builders. You can be going in there and being like, Hey guys, $550,000 in whatever. I got to show you this. Um, if you're curious, whatever it is, and then you show a tour, you didn't just say it was your listing. Um, but it might look like it is, um, but you're showing and you're adding value and people love trends. We have builders that aren't great about social media, you know, back six years ago, they were like, oh, you can't post without getting corporate permission. Now it's like, thank you. In fact, if you're relevant enough, that builder will put you on their stories. So that's one of my goals is I post stuff from builders and hope I get on their stories. So I get even, you know, more followers. Okay. Um, but my point we have parade of homes going on right now, you guys have huge opportunity. I think this is the last weekend, take the whole weekend, get a ton of content. You would have so much content. So you have to sometimes make ways and figure it out if you are not a busy agent, but adding value, everyone loves trends. They're decorating their home. They might not be buying now, but you're showing them that, you know, the trends you're involved in real estate every day, you're involved in real estate every day. Um, and, and you're just showing stuff. So there's no excuse for not having good content. There's just not. Um, okay. What could you talk about? You could talk about trends. You could talk about the market market updates can be really freaking boring, but if you do them, differently. They could be awesome. Um, how things are, how far are things selling for over rates? Careful about rates. Cause you don't want to be scary. Um, but how, I mean, how interesting people want to know, oh my gosh, you know, I just had one closed today. Just had one closed today, closed for six figures over full appraisal clause. It would not, it did not appraise, 
but that's what's going on this market due to major lack of inventory. Or you have people guess how many offers did you get? 22, 18, whatever they were. But people are interested in knowing about the market, even if they're not in it. So there's a way to do market reports that isn't freaking boring. Okay, there's one person, and I wish I would have wrote down her name, um, in Minneapolis market, selling Minneapolis. And she just did something I thought it was absolutely darling. And she said, over the weekend, I'm gonna show you the top, the most expensive property in Minneapolis that sold and the least expensive. And it was her saying it, and then she showed it. It was so interesting, I loved it. So you guys can pick something and, and show, she should do that, she probably is. Do that every week, have that be your thing. David Calhoun is one of my expansion partners on, I think he's maybe on here. He sells between um, Twin Cities and San Diego. Um, he does something every Friday that I look forward to is he shows two homes and asks about pricing and you kind of ask to he ask questions throughout the way and it's super fun. So that's his thing. You could create your thing. And don't be afraid guys, everyone's knocking off each other's stuff, you know? Uh, you know, I see people sometimes using what we're doing or, you know, mimic, fine. I do the same thing. I look for somebody in another market. When I go to these trainings, what are they doing? Ooh, I like it. I'm going to mimic that. You, you gotta, you gotta make it your own. So don't be afraid to find something that you consistently show up and do and find something that maybe someone else is doing that you could mimic and make your own. Okay. So I'm talking about content and adding value. Talked about creative homes. If you're on a team, there's opportunities, like on our team, there's opportunities to show up at photography appointments, inspections, or even what you're doing, whatever you're doing. If you're getting involved in real estate every day, let's say you have an inspection, there's learning lessons on that. So you're showing, you know, maybe the inspection, you're like, oh my gosh, did you know that the Venmar, we, Venmar, no, what is it? Ven. I don't know. It's the, in all these homes around here have this system. I think it's called Venmar and no one has it on correctly. And so if they have wood floors, they have cracks in the floor, like whatever. But if I learned that out of the inspection, I could say, Hey, guess what? Do you guys all know when you guys have these systems that this is the person, this is what it needs to be set out on the spring. This is what it needs to be set on on the fall. No one is using them correctly, whatever it is. I'm just like making something up right now, but you learn stuff at, at an inspection that you can share with people. So I, you know, if you're getting involved in real estate every damn day, get involved in real estate every damn day, you will have things to talk about. Um, mm. open houses. What about virtual open houses? I think more people should be, should be doing these. Maybe it's not your listing, but you ask the listing agent, you say, Hey, is there any way that I can do a virtual open house? I'll pop by your listing. You know, some people won't agree to this, but you could try. Like if you know someone and you have a good relationship with them, they're getting social media coverage out of it. Right. My, my girls can do this on my team. So it doesn't have to be your open house. We know from doing open houses, they're very effective. We try to pick up buyers from them. A lot of times people don't have representation, but we get a lot of people through that. But half the value of open houses is social media. So even if you don't have an open house, why not be like, hey, I mean, we can do this. You got to be careful who you're doing it with and you have to have permission. We can do this on our team. Hey guys, open house today from 11 to one. I am in Wyzetta Schools, Medina. I am going to give you a sneak peek coming up next, whatever that is. And then you're showing it. A lot of people aren't going to come to the open. They're not in the market, but they do. They are very curious, nosy neighbors. They might not have went to it, but they're very nosy. They want to see the inside of the house. They want to know how much it's sold for. They are nosy. So all of a sudden you're adding value on social media by doing that. So my, my takeaway on this is with, with your content, find ways to show up consistently and add value and figure out what your thing is. Okay. There's no excuse for not finding something. Every day, if you're getting involved in real estate, you have something to talk about, whether you're doing video or however you're doing it. Yep, that's all I gotta say. Okay, running ads on Facebook and Instagram. You can also run ads. I built my business doing this, um, but rules changed on Facebook. Six years ago, I could target zip codes. I targeted eight zip codes um, and it was very, very effective. Now you cannot do that. You cannot target by zip codes. In real estate, we have different rules, right? So you cannot do that. I think it's either a 10 or 15 mile radius, but you can run ads um, I have Sam doing this for me. Sam, are you on here? 
Hi, yeah, I'm on here. Hey, good, honey. Will you just talk super quick about how you run ads, um, what you use? Um, is it Creator Studio or whatever that is? Can you talk about that super quick? Yeah, so it's just through Facebook and then we can put that on Instagram and Facebook. And yeah, it's a 15 mile radius. So um, we kind of just look at where Kelly wants to run her ads. And then from there, it's just 15 miles. And we pretty much, um, we pretty much just use Plymouth and around there. Um, guys, we, I don't know, I spend less than a hundred bucks per. It's not, you know, but what's effective is coming soon because everyone wants to know about coming soon properties. I don't do as much sold and stuff like that. Um, right now that's more of a branding thing, but to pick up buyers, people want to know about coming soon properties. So, um, there is a way, Sam, I want you to answer this in a second too. There is a way to put on there what people have interests on. Do they have interest in Trulio? Have they searched Zillow? Do they like to shop at Home Depot? Whatever it is, you can check some of those boxes. However, what I've heard is that Facebook is very, very savvy with their algorithms. We just put it out there. I don't love that it's a 15 mile radius. I don't love that. I'm getting a lot of, you know, spending money, not reaching certain people, but with their algorithms, we really trust those. And we are not, Sam, are we selecting criteria or are we just leaving that open right now? No, we're just leaving it open. I feel like we found that, like you said, the Facebook algorithm's so smart that it kind of just figures it out on its own. And so I've just left it open. Yeah. So that's what we're doing right now. And are we running ads or are we boosting? And what is our opinion on that? We were boosting. And I feel like, I don't know. I don't think it's as effective sometimes just because when you boost, it's more just an awareness campaign. It's just going to go out to reach as many people as possible. Um, when you do an actual ad, you can be more specific. So, I mean, if your goal is to reach as many people as possible, I would boost. But if you want to be more specific, you can go in and um, go into your ads manager and choose certain, um, certain things. Okay, cool. So, test it out. If you guys have a coming soon, you can test it out. That that's what we're seeing as being more effective. Cause then they're like, okay, when can I get in? Can I get a tour? You know? And then we're like, well, do you have a realtor? You know, we ask different questions by the way, I have Sam on here and she's helping me, but I want to encourage you guys for six years, I did everything myself and I still do a lot, but now I hired Sam full time to help me with stuff, but I didn't do that for six years. So don't feel like you have to hire someone. You can do this absolutely on your own. Sam, I wanted to ask you one more thing. We don't do this a lot, but you can target by your friends and their friends, right? Like, what do we think about that? And what can you do? Yeah. So you can target by, well, there's a bunch of options, but you can target by people who've been on your Instagram, who's, who's engaged with your Instagram or Facebook page, who like, there's a bunch of different options. So if you want to be like, Oh, I want to retarget someone that's been engaging with my Instagram. Cause obviously they already know who I am and they're aware of me. Um, you can do that instead of just blatantly putting that out to any, like an ad out to anyone, which would be a boost. Like a boost is just going to go to everyone, no matter what. Um, so, yeah. So I like that we're boosting or running ads on, on just how we're doing it. I like that format, but I want to talk to you later because I want to do a branding campaign for people that we know and their people. So, I mean, there's different ways to do stuff and get in front of people, right? Sam, can you put that on our list? Ha -ha. Um, but there's different ways to do stuff. But again, being relevant, showing, showing coming soon is so important right now due to the major lack of inventory. So even guys on our team, you guys have access to a lot of, a lot of listings. You guys could be running ads, trying to get buyers. Got to be consistent. Spend 40 bucks. Try it. Um, okay, so that's that. So that makes it a little bit more active when you are spending some money. But guys, in the beginning, I didn't spend a whole lot of money um, on this. I just did it organically. Okay, so don't be bummed out if you don't have the money to do that right now. Okay, next thing. Get personal. Show your personal life. So it's really hard for me in the beginning. I am not typically a sharer of my personal life. Um, I am strategic about what I show. I say this all the time. I have one kid that doesn't mind me showing his stuff. I have another kid that doesn't like it. Please don't post me. Um, but here's the deal. This is a very, very, very personal business. People hire you because they like and trust you and think that you're an expert. 
And the stuff that I, if you guys look at any of my stories, I usually start out with something personal and then it gets to business. I mix in both, but on my own, I would only be showing business stuff. This sold, this is coming soon. Here's a property tour. Cause that's what I like. I have to remind myself to get personal. I think it's pretty important showing up on video, showing yourself being authentic, letting people get to know you. Um, then they're going to think of you. They're going to be like, oh, she's super real. She knows what she's talking about. You know, I like her vibe. I'm going to call her. So show people. And then, you know, also too, the nice benefit of, of that is guys, you attract who you are, you know, you attract like people. So all of a sudden, you know, some of these pain in the ASS people, maybe, um, or people that are not your vibe are not showing up. And when you get busy, it's really important. It's really important when you get busy to attract people who are great to work with and, and get your whole vibe and what you're doing and believe in you. Um, much rather work with those people, right? So show your personal life and figure out what that is. And there's some people that only share personal life and they don't have a lot of business. And sorry, like for me, I'm like, do you do any real estate? So careful, but that's just me. I'm more businessy like that. Okay. That's just me. But if you are only showing your personal life, I am for sure wondering if you sell any real estate. Okay. So mix it up, mix it up. Okay. Video. I touched on this a little bit by mistake. I've, I've gotten way more comfortable with this guys right now. Obviously this is recording, I, but I was not comfortable with any of this, but you just do it. What do they say? One of my favorite sayings this year is do it scared. Just freaking do it. You want to change your life. You want to sell more real estate. You just do it and you do it scared and you just do it. It becomes more natural. So like for me now, when I do videos, I literally, here's the nice thing about video guys is you can redo it a million times. In the beginning, when I would redo it a million times, I would find myself getting more and more nervous and worse. It would just be worse at the end, but you figure, you figure it out. Now for me, what was I do the other day? I posted something about me schlepping around signs. Like I had a minute and if it, if I didn't nail it then, or you don't have to be perfect. You do not have to be perfect. People do not want perfect, right? Um, but I only had a minute to do it. So either I'm going to use it or not use it. And I don't like to waste time. So I've gotten better at it, but I would really, really encourage you guys just do it. When you, when you do video, make sure you're authentic, obviously, and you're adding value or, or maybe it's something fun, but you know, video was a game changer for me. Um, I remember in the beginning, I only had maybe like five people like certain videos. And I was like, I don't even know, but I had to do something different. I had to change my life. I changed careers from wedding photography to real estate overnight at 40 single mom. I had to do something different and video just took off for me. And I'd be places and they'd be like, oh, maybe they didn't like it, but they'd say, oh, I saw your video on this. Can you, what, what about that? A development? Is that really selling for 900,000? Like, can you get in that development for 800? And all of a sudden it would just spark. So I'd really encourage if you're not already showing up, show up on video. You can do property tours. You can do new construction. You can do models. You can be like, hey guys, checking out David Weekly Homes today. Hey guys, checking out Hanson Homes today. This is $850,000 in Plymouth. Let me give you a tour. Okay. I believe in it. Okay. So I say this all the time, but it's just, it's true. It's, you gotta, you gotta be consistent. Um, you gotta find a way. It depends on how much volume you want to do. But if you are a full-time agent, you need to be showing up every day, every day. So if you're not, you know, this sounds simple, but it's not for a lot of people. You need, to, you can time block. You can batch your content. You can use things like there's programs guys out there and there's, um, there's whatever apps, whatever you call them that you can buy that you can plan in advance later, Hootsuite, Planoly, um, Facebook business is what we use because it's free. Um, we used to use other ones. There's things that you can move around your grid. You can pan, you can plan it all in advance guys. So you could literally time block maybe three hours on Sunday and plan your whole week. Okay. I also believe in do, I believe in doing that. We do that, but then I show up authentically too. Like I'm at a property or whatever it is, we mix it in, but it's super important to be consistent and you got to find a way. What is your way to do it? Do you need a time block every day? Do you want to time block a bigger chunk of the week and plan it out and buy one of those programs? Um, okay. 
I'm going to go back to questions at the end. I see some questions up there. Okay, but you need to be consistent. And, and also, I will say this. I think there is a fine line between being, you know, authentic and showing up and being annoying. Okay. We all know people that we've unfollowed because we think they're annoying. So you just got to find a balance. You got to find a balance, add value. Okay. Um, be creative, find your thing. I talked about this a little bit ago. Like I said, David Calhoun is showing up. He's doing every Friday. He's doing two tours on two different houses. Pretty fun. He found, this is interesting. He found that I think he might've stopped doing it. And like people like really like that. And they're like, oh my gosh, like what's going on? Like, I want to see that. They really like that and are engaged. So find your thing, look at what other people are doing and maybe find something that you can be consistent and do. Um, but be creative. Um, and I'll just say this, I mean, you might not know what that is right now. I've tried so many things and some things stick and some don't. So try it, see if it works. And if it works, keep doing it. Okay. I'm going to look at those in a sec. Um, batch batch your things. Okay. The other day I stopped into, again, I will say this, get involved in real estate every day. There is always something to do. So I stopped by for a final walkthrough on a home at a Hanson home and I couldn't get in. So what did I do? I trespassed in all the other homes um, that I could get into. <laughs> so I was in a Robert Thomas home and I did so much content while I was waiting to, for the garage door code. And I talked about farmhouse sinks. I talked about whatever I talked about. Oh, I talked about the countertops over here were this kind of quartz with the marbling and the veining. And then this was on the, on the perimeter. It was gray, the mixing and matching. That is a trend that I see. So I'm on there. I just batched a ton. I did a property tour. I said, Hey guys, you want to see what $900,000 buys you in YZ of schools? Let me give you a sneak peek. I bat, I just sat there and I got so much video. And now when I sit down, I can plan that all and I can spruce it all around. It doesn't need to be all at once. I could post something now. So considering, consider batching your content. The day you do your hair and put on makeup. I mean, some of us live in yoga pants, you know, half the, half the week, you know, whatever. Be real about that too. But maybe the day that you do your hair and makeup, maybe you're doing a bunch of content and you change your shirt and you just do a bunch that you can use throughout, you know, the week or two. And then you, then you sit down and you plan it out. So I think batching is important. Jenna Kutcher, um, she does a podcast. I used to listen to it all the time. She's super big on batching. If you want to listen to somebody who is strategic about that, I think that she's really good. Um, and then my last thing here is I'm all about nailing one platform. You do not need to own the world. Okay. For me in the beginning, it was Facebook. I am now 47. My demographic is on Facebook. Okay. Be where your people are, right? Like now I've learned, I really love Instagram. So I love Instagram more, but I have to remember to go post on Facebook. So I use them both, but figure out what your one thing is, what your one social media platform is going to be own it. But then when you do consider adding on another platform. So if you're on Facebook, at Instagram, it's very easy to you know, post between. When you're on Facebook or Instagram, there is a box that you can you know, go back and forth and, and post the same thing. Sometimes I don't like it all to be the same. I like to mix it up, but at least you're showing up on both. Um, I use LinkedIn. Um, I'm not sure it gets me a ton of leads, but it does sometimes, and it does make me effective. I believe, you know, the rule of marketing, where do they all check you out? They check you out on maybe LinkedIn, on Facebook, they, on my Instagram, all the things. So I believe in using that platform. I pour into that TikTok and reels, if that's working for you. But my biggest point is, is that take your one platform and own that first. But once you do add on another one. Show your content. If you're batching it, you already have that content, add it in all the different places. Okay. And then when you get big enough and you have it under control, maybe you're doing three. Okay. Do not be afraid to do one. Well, I have an agent on my team, all about Instagram for Taya 28 million last year gets buyer leads weekly. One platform for me, it's different. 
I, I'm a lot of different places, but I find that people will say to me, oh, I saw this, I saw that. I keep seeing your signs for me. I feel like it's more organic. I do a, a lot of different things, um, but don't be afraid to own one platform and do it very, very well. So there you go, guys. Um, take off your, I'm gonna answer some questions here and I'm gonna look at them. So any questions that people have? Oh, Sam, you're answering questions on the side. Are you seeing ads up for lead? Oh, are you setting these ads up? So talking about ads for lead gen, conversion, messages, links. I have Sam now manage this. We have different things that we say behind the scenes. Once people, again, we're doing a lot of coming soon. So I'm trying to get buyer leads off of that. Um, because there's no inventory and people are asking, but we have different things that we say back to people. We are trying to get leads from it. Um, but if they're using an agent, obviously we stop kind of communication. They need to go through their agent. Um, but otherwise we're trying to set up property tours from it. We will be doing a branding campaign um, too. We're doing that soon. Ha ha, Rachel, it's easier to ask for forgiveness than permission, LOL. Yeah, you and I, like there's a reason why you're on the team, right? Like I, there is there is a gray area. Um, yep, okay guys, so I'm gonna wrap up. Thanks for being on here. The next one that we're going to do um, is on next week is on building a team. So stay tuned for that. Ask me for the password if you would like to be on there and thanks for being here guys.